Hey gang, Yubi here, and today I'm going to introduce you to my version of the 3-in-1 portable bandsaw base, stand, cradle. Uh, so about 20 years ago, I got my first portable bandsaw. It was a cheap Chinese one, and I would clamp it in a vise to use it as a little portable table saw. So eventually I got tired of that and I came up with a cradle system, which I'm gonna show you right now. I upgraded to a Milwaukee bandsaw, not this one, but one like it. Uh, the old one with the cradle I ended up selling with my business when I moved to Missouri. So this is what I came up with. I upgraded to the Milwaukee because I was psyched about the motor being mounted on the bridge, creating more rigidity in the bridge's structure. And I created this cradle. Um, so now I no longer had to sacrifice the use of a vise. This had its own place in my shop. And if I needed to do some portable welding, I could do the portable welding with this unit as well. It's not just a unitasker. So this is the second version of the Milwaukee Cradle that I made. I did an instructable on it about four years ago and it was really popular. And if you're interested, it, I, I talk about the concepts involved in building this. So it doesn't have to be specific for the Milwaukee bandsaw. You're, you'll be able to make it a, a cradle like this for any saw. I just go over design concepts and fabrication concepts that are just real basic that would help you to make something like this if you're a beginner. So while the motor mounted design is a more rigid structure, it does have some imitations. So these saws came into development through the pipe cutting industry. This was used to cut pipe on site, not for us to set up as a little mini table saw. And so it has its limitations. While the motor mounting here does stiffen up the structure, it limits how deep of a cut. So it limits the depth of your cut to about five inches. So the cheaper Chinese version models that I've seen up until recently, the motor is mounted in a different location. Uh, DeWalt makes one like that and Porter Cable owned by DeWalt also makes one like that. So let's go check out a design that is more suitable for metal workers to set up a unit like this. So I've got it set up in a new location in my shop. It's right over here. And what's nice about it is this is my cutoff kind of extra stock. So it's real close to where I would grab something and then I can just cut it. Now, like I said, this is a three in one. I can use this as a portable saw. I can use it as this wall mounted type situation, but I can also use this portably as a little table saw. So let me show you that. All right, gang, so let's get into some of the basic features of this unit. Okay, so right now I have it in the wall mounting position and this is my switch on off. So I've got a little wedge design and then a tube that this goes into. So I turn it on and off like that. This is a safety button. And what I've done is I've depressed it while I've taken this switch out of the housing and I've depressed it and drilled a hole through the switch and pushed a 3 seconds piece of filler rod. So it's locked in the on position, so I don't have to push this on. And it's got a high-low, which is a great bonus. So this can be easily removed.
So for the portable table saw version, it really needs to be clamped down to the table. Otherwise, when you put pressure on the work, it can move around. This is pretty heavy base, but it's just not heavy enough. Uh, if you had something bat to just run into, like a wall, or then that would be helpful too. So this is the little table version. At any point, I can pull this out of the cradle and use it for portable cutting without the use of any tools, which is really important to me. Whenever I design something, I try to make it a toolless type design. So let me show you how that works. Take out the switch. You can place it here if I don't want it to get lost. Lift up the table and then just pull out the saw. So before I said unmodified, but I've got this bar attached underneath the handle. The only thing I had to do is make spacers and use longer metric bolts there to hold it all in place. And I've got the smaller table on here, which is great because when you're doing cutting in the field, you do not want a large table in the way because it does interfere with and limit the kind of work that you can cut. So it's nice to have the really small stop here. So this is a, this is a great tip guys, especially for the beginners out there. Figure out a way to mount your saw at the same height as a large welding table, work table that you have around your shop. And, and you can cut your long material without busting out the angle grinder. Also, if you mount it, I guess, more in the center of the table, you can take large sheets of complicated shapes and, you know, you don't have a plasma cutter, well, hey, this is your way of getting some serious cuts done. You can do large diameter circles. You can have the saw mounted the other way so the blade is closer to the table. And, you know, I remember doing like a tree gate kind of thing where I had to cut out a bunch of tree limbs out of some sheet metal. And that, that came in really handy for that project because I didn't have a torch, I didn't have plasma cutter, and I would have had to cut it all by hand or use, I didn't have pneumatic tools and I wasn't going to get an electric nipper. But anyways, my, this isn't set up for that, obviously. I've got this on a lift cart. Like I showed you, it's definitely level here, which is the most important thing, but got a little bit of work to do to just bring that to level. Well, that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, like and subscribe, share. That's really helpful to me. Have a nice day, unless you have other plans. Peace.